kick off, maybe it would be good to introduce yourself, uh, tell us what you're currently doing, um, and just a bit of background on your education and all of that. Hi, I'm Halle. Uh, I'm, I'm an associate at the Boutique Investment Bank. Uh, my work focuses on European fixed income financing um, for corporations and banks in Europe. Um, so I'm very much in the capital market advisory side. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, I also, uh, inspired by you, uh, joined a YouTube community as well. I'm right. making content on investment career and just talking about my experience of getting into investment banking. And I also write posts on my blog as well. So don't be shy to check out my blog. <laughs> what's your YouTube channel called and what's the blog called? Oh, my YouTube channel is Just How TV, and my blog is just justhow.co.uk. So okay, amazing. I'll I'll link that in the description, or I'll put it on the video somewhere. Um, cool. And in terms of, well, first actually, how how is working from home given COVID and all of that? How's that been going? I I must admit the first few weeks was quite tough because you know the the routine it has is, is different yeah and uh, because it came all of a sudden so our, uh, my work and my colleague wasn't really prepared to what was coming so you know setting up uh, the computer work making sure we are comply with uh, confidential information mm. and so and now I think we're, we're getting used to it now um, you know the routine is just is adjusted yep. and the work still continues so we're happy about that do you prefer working from home or do you would you like to be in the office you know, sometimes I do like a bit of a change. Yeah. So I think um, working from home is great because, you know, you can go to the kitchen, grab a snack, uh, cook exactly. whatever you want. Uh, but, you know, a, a bit of like a, a professional environment also help because, you know, you see your colleague, uh, you see your clients, uh, you attend meetings. Yeah. And those are the things that, because my role is client-facing, uh, so it's good to uh, have that continue. Cool. If we take it back a bit, because a lot of the viewers are either not in university yet or they're applying to uni and, or they're in uni or they've just recently graduated. And oftentimes I find that a lot of young people find it interesting in digging deeper into the person that is in the job or, you know, that's in the city working. So in terms of your upbringing, did you grow up in a busy household where, there, where your parents like heavily focused on making sure you become a certain uh you know whether it's like in the asian community it's a doctor or engineer did you have any of that or was it more of a relaxed approach to your career and your education i was born in vietnam and okay. i came here when i was eight years old and so i always have that you know that discipline that you know very studious yeah. put your head down do your do your maths <laughs> do your science <laughs> make sure you get into like you know the respect respectable career like a doctor or a lawyer yep. um, but I always enjoy the, the dealing side of um, a business like you're making good deals because I had a sticker business when I was in the play when I was in school you know selling stick stickers to the school kids nice. so I always wanted to do something that you know involve uh, deal making yeah so I was being fostered since the age of 13 up until I went to university it, and yeah. my foster mom is is incredible so she's uh, she's Jamaican and she really pushed me to uh, you know uh, get involved in school activities do my studies and making making sure I hit my grades because yep. I did want to go to university and I did want to you know come out of, uh, of a foster home you know being a success story not not only for me but I think for her because she's such an amazing woman has always been there for me so you know it's it's, it's, a, it's a give back like That's thank amazing. you and I'm, I'm the result of that she, she's done an amazing job so wow that that is really nice to hear um in terms of getting into uni which university did you go to and what did you study and how did you decide you wanted to study that course uh, so I did economics at university. So I went to Royal Holloway University, which is not a Russell group. And, and so it's, you know, it's, it's quite tough to get into investment banking, but I always mm. wanted to do economics. Yeah. I did uh, economics A-level, I uh, really enjoyed it. I like maths. And um, yeah, so I thought, okay, this is a good uh, degree that would highlight my skills. It would yep. 
give me the necessary skills for any job I want to go in the future. Yeah, so I, I really enjoy uh, economics at A level and so I really want to continue with the subjects at university. And I went to visit a few uh, universities around and, and spoke with professors. Mm. And so I thought, okay, economics is what I want to do. And then the second question is where? So I applied to, you know, a few, um, I, have, I applied to Oxford. I got to the interview stage and it was, it was quite tough uh, at that point because I believe I wasn't ready uh, yeah. to be well prepared for the interview and it was very, um, you know, selective, very competitive. Yes. And, um, and also, uh, and Roy Holloway offered me like quite early on yeah. and it's a beautiful university. It's a, it's a campus accommodation. Mm. So everything is happening on campus. So it's, you don't have to go to like, you know, streets. Yeah. How, how, do I, how do I describe it? So it's like, you know, it's like a big field, you know, yeah, you, got a castle, you got a castle in the middle of, uh, of, of Egham and it's just a beautiful view. And I was offered a scholarship there. Mm. So you know it's uh it's, uh, it's <laughs> so i i decided to take up the the offer i did economics there and uh, yeah and enjoy the scholarship amazing so then after you graduated you did your masters at the lse which is amazing um how was that process what made you did you want to do a masters going into your undergrad or did you think this is the best next step to go and do in order to go into the world of banking what was your thought process yeah so i thought um during the t leading up to my masters um the uk just voted out of uh, the all right. yeah uh, so there was it was all over the news yeah. and actually i didn't go straight from the master from i didn't go straight from my undergraduate to my master i actually took a year out okay. to work at Citibank. all right so i was an analyst in their uk investment bank um team mm. and so I just wanted to see how the com like how companies react to these news yeah. and so I thought okay this is like you know um, a great opportunity for me to gain want to gain experience and you know to save for my master's degree as well mm. and you know it's a it's a win-win and so after my inter my contract is up I just uh, continue with my master's got it got it and so you, you did your undergrad and then managed to get into City, which is great. Did you have a game plan when you're at university? Like, I need to get this internship or I need to do this, this and this in order to secure this job. Or did you have a game plan? 100% from school days. Oh, wow. I was wanted to like, as soon as I, as I got my national insurance number, I was hunting for internships because things are getting very competitive. I mean, yeah. you are a British uh, student, like I, I grew up here as well, but you know, there are competition outside of the UK, you know, there, yeah. there are people who are speaking like three, four different languages. They got the same back, uh, same academic background. And you know, even some of them have like very good um, work experience. So you have to make yourself stand out from the very beginning. Yeah. yeah. Any, any experience, any chance to shadow a professional in a work environment, I'm like, yep, I'm up for it. I want to do it. I want to build up my CV yep. you know, from the start. I think, I think this is just my personal take. Yep. Uh, other people maybe a bit more relaxed on that side, etc. But, and also because I did not go to a Russell group or like a top 10 university, I do know that I need to do more to yes. stand out. Exactly. I so that's why. That's a very good point that you touch on. A lot of the young people think, you know, it's the end of the world if you don't go to a Russell Group Uni or Oxford, Cambridge, any of those. But the truth is you can still break into the industry. But as you say, you need to be proactive. You need to kind of focus on getting that mentorship, getting that work experience, building up your CV. Because in the end, when it comes to an interview, I'm sure, as you're aware, um, you have more to talk about in the interview. You, you have more experiences to draw on when you get to an interview or on your application. Yes, I, I completely agree. Mm. And since after you graduated and did your first job, what led you to, so you said your contract ended and then you went and did the masters. Um, at that point, did you want to do a different role or were you certain that this is the industry or this is the type of work that you wanted to do? 
Uh, so after I graduated, I was looking for jobs. I do like the industry. I like, you know, the environment, the people around. Like they're very smart. I knew I could learn a lot from yeah. these professionals, especially in investment banking. Yeah. I do like the fast pace. You know, the being um, being in the center of the of the all the actions in the yeah. market. I do like keeping up to keeping up with it. Yeah. And uh, so I had interviews at a few places. Uh, got for some really good offers and then I decided to um, accept uh, my my current employer which is Storm Harbor it, it is a boutique investment bank yep. the team is smaller and um, and so I, I'm able to make a bit more add more value yep. so I, ch I chose a smaller company so that I could uh, learn more on the job and also to um, add more value because it's such a small team and you know, the impact I could have is you know, is bigger than from, from a bigger bank perspective. Yeah, got it. Um, oftentimes a lot of students and graduates wonder if they should, because obviously it's attractive to, you know, go for the big name bold bracket brands, but there's a lot of benefits with working for a boutique firm. Um, and as you mentioned, you can add a lot more value. You are, you know, rather than being a small cog in a huge organization, you get a lot more responsibility by being in a boutique. Um, is the culture like, from working at City, uh, the culture there in investment banking to the culture at Storm Harbour, how would you say that differs, if it differs at all? Um, to be honest, I don't see a huge difference. I mean, I, in a sense that you get more communication from, uh, from top management at the bigger banks. So, for example, they would put on like events, like speakers. They're inviting the industry um, leaders, like clients that comes in to talk mm. to to, um, to the company. Like you know, they do have you know a canteen, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and and because uh, of my nature of my company is very top heavy, yeah. so there's not many uh, analysts or like you know uh, junior bankers uh, like. So there's only a few of us. However, if you're in a bigger company, you have a lot more network of the, the juniors to share kind of the, 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 the workload. Whatever. But like you said, working with a smaller company, you get a lot more responsibility. So you know, there's pros and cons yeah. for each. So you can, I, would, I would suggest for any uh, graduates to yeah. you know, go for big big bank and go for a, a boutique. Get as much experience because, you know, you need to be able to make your uh, make your decision based on your value and what companies you can see yourself working for long term. Mm, amazing. In terms of challenges along the way, was it plain sailing? Was it easy to secure your offers or were there obstacles um, between you and securing each offer? Uh, for the first internship, my very first investment banking internship was was hard. It was with Credit Suisse, and um, you know I was up against very tough competition. So I went to the assessment center, mm. and it was a, a one day thing. So you go and do your interview. So there was about three rounds of interview in the morning, mm -hmm. and they decide on the same day if you make the second round or not. Oh wow. So it's very uh, brutal, I would say. So after the three rounds of interview with other candidates, so you know, like I'm sure you've been to all the assessment center before. You try to gauge what the other person is, and you know, I look, I talk to them, and they say, "Oh yeah, I did like you know, one internship here already. I already done this internship. You know, I have years of experience." Bear in mind, I was still a, a third year graduate, guy. Like, yeah. In, in, in my uni so I didn't have that you know investment banking inter, um, experience yeah so you know all I have to do is go out there do my best and you know whatever happened happens Amazing. and I was once when I heard my name called out I was like I'm going home like they were leading us out of the room yeah. going towards the lift I was like I, we, I, we were looking yeah. around and the funny thing is there was five girls and only one guy that got through, right? Wow. Yeah, there was, there was all, the, all the girls, uh, most of the girls got through and there was only one guy. Interesting. And I, and I was like, okay, a lot of girls, is this, is this a good thing? 
<laughs> and so we were we were like okay we were looking at each other like okay this is it guys we're going home and then we they took us we went past the lift and then we, they took us to the room and said congratulations guys you guys are in the second round i was like hey. are you joking like all that time i was just like i thought i was going home yeah. and the second uh in the afternoon, we had the assessment center where we uh, you know, did the case studies. Walk me through your thought process, how you yeah. got to, you know, to your outcome. Yeah. So a bit of market. Estimate me how much you're going to make on this. It was like, you know, how many sales you can make uh, from, from a sportswear brand or something like that. So it's a very, like, you know, standard case study. Yeah. And, and further interviews as well. Mm. And yeah, so like the, the people were super, super nice. They had this chairman of Credit Suisse to, to come and, you know, be part of the interview. So it was a really nice touch for them to, you know, get the very senior bankers involved because it shows that they do care about your growth and you know, they do care about the process that they put in to, um, to, uh, to train and to grow the individual who would succeed in banking. Wow. Yeah, that is a nice touch to, to bring in someone that senior. But it could be also quite scary for the interviewees, I imagine. Well, I don't, I don't think he told me he was a chairman. Oh, he, right. actually, he was an MD. They just have like MD on it. Yeah. But like, turns out he was uh, the, M, the chairman, of the vice chairman of the... Of the, of the cool. so great, yeah. um, in terms of the whole interview process, assessment center process, is there one area that you found most challenging? Was it the interviews or the case studies? I would say um, because I did a lot of preparation leading up to to the interview like you know I practiced all the case studies that there's out there I spoke to analysts and associates working in the industry just to Mm. kind of get their tips and advice on how to best do this and I think there is one cliche um, saying that you know be yourself and I think it's all about your confidence you know if if this is the job that you really want to go into you have done all your research you have exhausted all your resources to find out exactly what investment analysts do yep you go in and you just like this i'm prepared for this i knew what is expected of me and i'm ready so i think in a sense i was you know quite nervous because you know after speaking with other candidates they are very well experience they they have done these uh, interviews before some of them already have offers from other banks Mm. you know so you know they're in a very good position and so it all comes down to you as an individual to be prepared and to be confident uh, in in the interview that's the most important thing i think it's good you mentioned that because oftentimes like sometimes young people or students or graduates can think yeah you just do a bit of preparation and you go in there and it's easy but it really does take a lot of work it takes a lot of research a lot of networking reaching out to the right people and you want to be in a position where it comes naturally to you but you know enough that you impress the person interviewing you right so it's it's important i think it's good that you mentioned that how important the preparation is and most of the time you are interviewing with a senior analyst or an associate of the the bank so these are the people that you are likely to work with Mm. so you're going to have to build that rapport and build that trust in them that you are to be uh, working within their team they know they can trust you and they know that you won't be afraid to ask questions if you are not sure because most of the time um, interns make the mistake of you know being shy and not asking questions and they're afraid they're not asking the right question so you know they want the person who kind of like be confident enough in themselves to ask the questions if they are not sure right this is probably one of the hardest questions on these interviews or conversations and that is if you were to explain what you do for your job to a five-year-old how would you explain it uh, so i would say because i have a five five year nephew so i would say okay. <laughs> <laughs> so i help companies out there who are looking for uh, money to grow their business nice. so that, that is basically it okay you've answered that question before i'm sure because that is a good experience <laughs> um okay cool now in turn because i'm sure the people watching this conversation are probably dying to know what a day in the life looks like and i'm sure as you know every job in the city every single day is different 
Um, but you know, general day, like what time do you, like when not in COVID times, but when you were going into the office, what time would you get in? What would the day consist of? Um, when would you kind of take your breaks or have lunch? And then when would it end? Um, just an insight into that would be very useful for everyone watching this. Uh, I think, well, on average, I mean, working on the deal side, there is um, a deal cycle. So, you know, to going towards the end of the year, mm. that's when it's the busiest. In oh. the summer, it's not as much because most of the senior uh, bankers and also the clients go on holiday with their family. I would pick a day, uh, I would say, going to, go, leading up towards um, uh, the end of the year because that's when it's the busiest. So I would say my busiest day would be I would wake up around 6.30, like 6, 7, and get ready, leave my house, and go on the tube. <laughs> horrible, horrible learning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hot and stuffy. Yeah, exactly. And in the, in the morning, it's not nice because, you know, people are grumpy. And then I would uh, I get in the office at 8.30. Okay. Before, uh, before um, you know, most of the meetings tend to happen, like, sometimes nine on the dot or 10 o'clock really early. So mm -hmm. I get in, you know, check my emails, um, plan what is, uh, what is the rest of my day going to look like. I mean, it should be in my calendar already. Yeah. Um, usually I would uh, look at my calendar a week before so I know exactly what is uh, happening uh, the following week so that I could plan my, uh, my work accordingly and prioritize my items. Yeah. And so my day would be, mostly consists of uh, client meetings, uh, being on call, mm -hmm. and also to um, present, put a presentation together, doing a pitch book. Got it. Uh, and you know, because I do get requests from my senior, uh, my, my seniors. Hali, can you do, uh, do, do a, a quick uh, investment memo for the client that's you know, working in Switzerland, uh, they're looking to raise 200 million uh, at, at this rate, you know, can you do, do an do a, do a investment memo so we can like, send it to uh, our sales team so that they can go out and you know, look for the right investor. And for, for those watching this and wondering what's an investment memo, would you like to just run over what, what that is quickly? Sure. So investment memo, you can also call it as a teaser. So it's a very quick snapshot uh, of a client. So usually we don't name the client, which is like, you know, look, we, we are working with this company in, in this jurisdiction. So it's Switzerland or Poland or you know, a UK company. And, you know, they are working in the auto industry or in a tech company. And they are looking to raise X amount of money. Uh, and, you know, the rates... So usually uh, the clients uh, want, so I want to raise financing for the next three to five years. I want it to be a loan, a straight up loan, or they want it to be a securitization that we can do that as well. So to keep it simple, they just want a straight, uh, straight loan. Yeah. Next, uh, next five, uh, three to five years. And the, the interest rate that they are willing to pay is 3%, 3 to 4%. And we would be like, and our team would sometimes we do advise the clients like, no, this is a bit too low. Given the environment or given the, um, the, given the environment and given the industry, this is a bit too low. We would say five to six is more, is more doable. Mm -hmm. We do have that input to, with the clients like, you know, advising, advising them. And I would put like one page or sometimes two page presentation and list all the, all the information that, that we can, that the clients is okay for us to put on, you know, a bit of uh, their background, what they're looking for, and that's it. And then we, uh, we, we get compliance clearance before we send it out to, to our sales team and then they share it with their investors. Great, great. Uh, and then in terms of the first half of your day compared to the second half of your day, do you like to... Uh, split up some of your like do you like to work on pitch books maybe later on in the day or earlier on or do you like to do your emails get them out of the way early on or do you, do you like structure your day in a certain way or is it just whenever things come in whenever whenever things comes in because with this um, you know with, with the nature of the industry mm -hmm. sometimes a client come out of nowhere and say hey 
I got. I really want to raise uh, the me. Um, I really want to raise finance for the next uh, you know, few months. Because I really need it. It's urgent. And so, like you know, other other projects can be put on hold, yeah. and this will take priority. So it's very much you know deal basis, yeah. and you, you just have to be quick with your fingers. You know, like you you know your shortcuts, know where your uh, where you set your files, email quickly. And one of the main learn lesson that I learned from this is always prioritize and always always ask for a deadline. Yeah. That is. That will make you stand out a lot from other interns and also other analysts. Mm. Always, if you, uh, if even the CEO asks you to do something, or uh, your um, analyst, your vice president, or your MD asks you to do something, always ask for a deadline. So that way you can manage and also prioritize, so that you make sure you meet uh, the requests and you know, and also give yourself time to. You know, uh, check your work and make sure it's the high standard. So I think that's that's very important. That is that is very very good advice. Um, in terms of your hours, what are your hours like? What time do you, would you typically finish when it's deal season? When it's deal season, season, like I'm quite lucky. I don't have the crazy M and A hours, mm. which is uh, which is amazing. Uh, so I would, I think, the latest I have stayed in the office was eight o'clock. Okay. And that's well, have, yeah, and that's when we have like you're working on deals. And a lot of the things, a lot of the times, uh, we work with third parties, like other lawyers are working on a deal. So we try to uh, work as much as possible on the certain documents, making sure that it uh, it reads correctly, and then we send it back to the lawyers. So like you know, we put the ball back in the court so that we can focus on other other projects. So it's all about prioritizing and managing your workload uh, correctly. So if you know that it, it requires another person to look at it, yeah. try to get that to them so that you can focus on other other project other other projects. Yeah, I think people don't give enough credit to how important time management and prioritization are as an employee in this industry because that will literally save you so much time and allow you to look you know impressive in the eyes of your colleagues and team members. Uh, yeah, it's exactly. I, I, I totally agree. And always, always communicate. And I always over communicate. I always CC my director or my managing director in all the emails that I send out to. If I, if I need to send it to compliance for approval, I always CC them so they don't have to chase me. Yeah. So I always kind of like um, making sure they are in the loop. Mm. And uh, yeah, I think that that's one of the advice I would give to uh, the graduates watching this video. Always over communicate. CC your seniors in your e in the email so that they don't have to chase you. Like mm. when they are chasing when they are chasing you, you know, like, you know, that's like your no warning sign. You know, exactly. you need to miss your um, you know so refocus and you know prioritize your work. Uh, yeah. Cool. Conscious of your time, I've got a few more questions, but happy to stop if because it, it's one. Oh, I'm, happy, I'm happy to continue. Like if you got okay. all the questions, I'm happy to answer. Got it. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, in terms of your degree and your masters, do you apply any of that in your current role? I do, in a sense that I, because of uh, the markets, uh, we, we work in investment banking, and it's very market driven. Mm -hmm. So, what I have learned uh, economics, you know, the the supply and demand, the mechanism of how the system work, it gives you that skill, that analytical skill set that really, really helpful in, in, in this. But I'm sure if you do other um, other subjects like physics or maths, it also gives you that uh, analytical yeah. skill as well. Uh, but for economics, this the wider application, mm. uh, it allows you to kind of see certain things from different perspective. Because you know, some of our clients are, you know, customer, they, 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 they do have customers and we, we do sometimes give them like, oh, this is our thought on the industry because for me as well, like, oh, it is, for example, we have had this client that's, you know, distribute uh, drinks in, uh, to, uh, to high-end uh, restaurants. Mm. And, you know, I understand why a certain time of the season, they are more busy and sometimes they are not yeah. based on my economics background. Whatever. So in that sense, I can adapt to, you know, if it's a term sheet or so I'm working with them, 
I can adapt it to, you know, or I understand why their lender have, have um, a different offer mm. in terms of interest rate or in terms of the terms that they can do for yep. my clients. So, you know, in the sense that it does apply, however, the experience, what you learn on the job is also very important. So I know people that did, you know, history yep. or do a law degree or do you know, English and they still manage to get into uh, the, uh, the finance uh, mm. industry. Yeah. So I think it's down to you as an in individual. You, you can read up on uh, your know, articles, do, do some of your online courses. That is very, very helpful. I know you know, watch your videos. Is there, <laughs> you got all the, all the information there, you know, like very like... Oh, no, I think that's, uh, it's, it's important that you mention that what you said, like it helps to have that basic knowledge that basic grounding in markets through your economics degree but yeah. a lot of it is learned on the job and you've got a lot of people who do different courses and still enter the industry um mm -hmm. in terms of some of the pros and cons of working in the industry or your current role what are some of your favorite parts about it and what are some things that you know might not annoy you but some of the negatives or the cons about working in your current role uh, the positive the positive thing is that it's a small team, which I really, really enjoy because mm. I get direct access to my MD uh, all the time. Like they, he sits like you know, one seat away from me, so I can always have that dialogue with him. If I don't understand something, you know, like it's, it's stretched just like, can you help me on something? Mm. And I, I, I see my CEO every day in the office, which is nice because they're mm. working with a big a company. You don't, sometimes you don't ever see your CEO anywhere yeah. or have that one-on-one -on -one talk with him. Yeah. So it's, it's a positive thing. And another thing that I really enjoy about my company is that they are very, very uh, he top heavy, meaning that there's a lot of uh, senior uh, people in the company and they're very, very well knowledge. Yeah. So in that sense, I do, I, I have that access to them. If I don't understand something, I can just go straight to to the, the senior salesperson and ask them questions. So they are very, very knowledge uh, within their, their field. Yeah. And so that's always a positive. And another thing that I also enjoy is that because being one of the juniors in the company, I am able to take on more responsibility and also to learn really quickly on the job. Mm. My input, uh, I do feel that it is more valuable uh, than if I was in a bigger company. Got it. And, and the cons, I, I, can't, I can't think of a cons at the moment. I would say like, that's not enough uh, juniors. I mean, I think it's great that I think more juniors should be able to have access to, to, um, to, this, to a smaller company because it's a smaller company. They don't recruit on like a regular basis, like a bigger well, price. And so, and the second thing is that the training is not, uh, it's not as thorough, I would say, because you know, it's a smaller company, so it's very much learning on the job. So depending on your pers uh, personality, you are you know, prefer to just learn on the job, or you uh, you have that you know two or three weeks of training with uh, with a bigger bank. What hobbies do you like to do, or what do you do to keep yourself busy, um, and how do you spend your time outside of work? Uh, so before I started the YouTube channel, so I started it actually like uh, in April, so during during the lockdown. And before that, I do enjoy going you know, to, uh, to a gym, going swimming. I do enjoy cooking. So like, I carry on like, you know, learning different cuisines to cook. Mm -hmm. And I, I absolutely love traveling. Every time I have a chance to you know, uh, take, take a few days of work, I just pack my bag. It's more like you're backpacking a solo adventure with, with me, so, with my partner. Yeah, and we just say, yeah, we just go, we we'll be, be traveling. When was the last time you went back to Vietnam? Oh, yeah, I was supposed to be in Vietnam in March and I had to cancel. But before that, I was there two years ago. And uh, yeah, I went there. I went travel by myself. Uh, so I uh, had my little backpack, went to Hanoi, went to Hue, Hoi An. And it's just beautiful. Have you, have you been to Vietnam? I went in December, actually. So my wife's actually Vietnamese. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Um, really? so, yeah, we, we met at university. Um, right. Yeah, and so I, it was my first time in Vietnam in December. We went 
it's beautiful. Like I tell her, like I would happily go back every year. Um, wow, that's so cool. Did she show you around, eat the right food? Yeah, she. I'm I'm very lucky. I I must say so. She like yeah. We did everything, checked out everything, ate everything. Like it was amazing. Like honestly. Uh, where is her family from? Uh, Saigon. Oh uh, right. Yeah. Must be very busy down there. Yeah. So her uh, father's side is from Hanoi, and her oh. mother's from Saigon. So it's quite mixed. We went to Saigon and then we went up to the like middle. Like, I, I'm bad with like names and, and remembering areas. But uh, next time we go, I want to check out Hanoi and like explore the whole of Vietnam, really. Yeah, I, there's so much to do. I, yeah. I would def definitely like um, recommend anyone, and not because you know I'm I'm Vietnamese, but there is generally there are good good things to do in in Vietnam for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to go back next time. But obviously, once all this COVID stuff kind of settles yeah. down, um, yeah. last. Last question from my side, and that is, you know, any final words or tips or advice for graduates or students watching this, this video? I would say be consistent. Mm -hmm. If you get rejected, like, don't feel disheartened. And I do, I do understand sometimes you ask yourself, like, what have I done wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes there's a bit of luck element involved that you can have the perfect answer, you can have the perfect CV, but something, you know, some, sometimes the luck is not in your favor, but I, I would always say, like, keep going. If the industry is where you truly see yourself in the, in the next, you know, five, ten years, definitely, like, go for it. I, I do have uh, people going kind of like taking a, the longer route. Mm. You don't always have to go through the internship. You can always start from, let's say, operations and then work your way out of it. Yeah. As long as you keep your head down and like you just keep going. So don't, don't, don't be disheartened if you get rejected. It happens and it happens to everyone. Yeah. Careers are long, right? We've got 30, 40 years. Trust me. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. So like, sometimes you have to take a detour. You sometimes you have to do, uh, go to a, another company in order to get into banking. So, you know, it's a very much, and uh, don't worry, everything will sort itself out, I would say. That's it, exactly. You just need to put in the work a bit um, and do your research and be strategic in your approach, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, before we wrap up, if you want to shout out anything that you're working on or any, so you mentioned you've got your YouTube channel, the blog, I will link them in the description to the video. So I make content on investing, uh, money, career, uh, travel, because I'm at the moment I'm traveling. So I would do some, you know, some fun, some mm. fun segment on, on my channel, just to show you, uh, you know, my uh, my my trip. Great. So if you're watching this, make sure you follow all of those. I, I don't want people to spam you by reaching out to you, but if they've got any questions or is LinkedIn easiest? I'm happy for people to reach me on LinkedIn or you can contact me through my blog. Okay, yeah, amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time. It's been a really good convo. Um, and obviously, like, you've got my contact details anytime you've got any questions or if you want to reach out to me or, you know, happy to help, like, with the YouTube. I'm going to check out your YouTube channel in a bit because I haven't come across it yet. <laughs> um, um, I'll let you get back to enjoying the weather on this beautiful Friday. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Have a good day. You too. Have a good weekend as well. Bye.